Hello everyone, welcome back to the Crafting OT. Doing something a little bit different today. Um, I kind of wanted to show you how I set this canvas up and I've kind of just started it. And I also wanted to show a different um, hand technique for holding uh, the little pens that come with it. So what I did, because I wanted to be able to sit in my recliner and kind of watch TV. And if I lower that, you can see the cat over there. <laughs> playing with the TV stuff as long as he doesn't knock anything over um, so what I did is I have a couple cardboard boxes from Christmas who doesn't at this point and I just cut out a shape that was about what I needed for this because I wanted to be able to sit and have this on my lap and still get to it and it's not gonna go anywhere it's not gonna move so I just taped the edges up here um, on each corner to do that and the other thing that I did is I transferred all of my beads, all of my drills, I know I keep calling them beads, that's my beadwork side of me, into these little guys. And then I cut out the um, label and taped it on, which is kind of hard to see. It's not a very distinguishing color, so I have to pay attention to them a little bit. I had gotten this little box that was on sale at, I think it was Joanne Fabrics. And when you open it, it has all these little individual guys. Um, and that's what I did. So I put them all in there. So it's all contained, not as likely to send them flying. I have a little table next to my chair that I have everything kind of balanced on. So we'll see how that goes. And the other thing I wanted to talk about, and we'll do little mini, um, I'll check in with you on my progress as I go along here. Um, I am going to do the round beads first, drills, round drills first, before I switch to these kind of odd shaped ones here. Um, I'm probably going to have to use my tweezers for some of these odd shaped ones because they didn't seem to pick up very well with the drills with the pens for the drills when I did the bookmark. So we'll see how that one goes. Um, I just started a line up here and I wanted to talk about pen, the different ways that you can hold a pen. So kind of a traditional way that we hold pens is this method here. I'll come around this side. Um, and this is kind of what we were all taught in school, how to hold pens. But there's different ways that you can hold pens. Sometimes the issue with this is that, you know, people can get this really tight grasp or, you know, they can get holds like this, especially kids when they have weak hands. Um, they don't have the strength to hold here. And this is not, you're not going to be able to write or do a lot of fine motor or little stuff easily with a when you hold your hand this is called a grasp pattern when you hold your utensils like this so we really want to get to a, a what they call a more functional grasp um because it lets you do a lot more now that's not to say that if someone has um really tightness in their hand and they can't do this and this is all they can do then that's all they can do in the and you work with that and you figure out how to make that work the best that it can. Uh, but what I wanted to show you was this pattern, this way of holding. Has anyone ever seen this one before? This is actually when I was in school, this was taught to us um, when I was in college for occupational therapy. This was taught to us as a new way that people are being or kids are being taught how to hold um, their pencils and pens and things like that. The reason being, it's much nicer on your joints. It's a very ergonomic grip. Um, so it can be easier to manipulate. And I've actually taught this hand pattern, this way of holding, to people who have had strokes and don't have the muscle tone, the muscle strength, the ability to hold it this way anymore, but they still want to be able to write and do things. So I've taught them this way because you can wedge this down in here and just the uh, tension between your fingers helps hold that. Like I don't have to do anything to hold it there. It'll stay. And then I can guide it. Now, I'm finding with this one, this pen, because it's so much fatter, which is really great for a nice hold, an ergonomic hold in the traditional way. It's not super comfortable for me to do it this way. 
Um, it's just kind of almost too fat. And again, it depends upon what you need. Someone may need the, the wider hold and that might work. Uh, I found for me using the thinner one worked well for me to get in there. And I also found because I wasn't trying to control a writing so much as I was just picking up and dropping a pen or the beat, uh, drill that I didn't even use this guy right here my little index finger here I just used the middle finger and the thumb and that worked better for me so let's go ahead and see if we can't if I can't show you this grip in action we're doing the E Oop, not what I wanted you to do <laughs> See if I can get this to turn a little bit. There we go. And I have my drills on the table here. So it's going to take me a little bit longer to get around, get to the drill, get around the camera, get to the canvas. on here. Bump the camera, sorry about that. Okay, so there's that line and that was me holding it um, in that grass pattern. I'm going to actually zoom this out a little bit and do a few more so you can maybe see that a little easy. Oh, camera likes to keep flipping on me instead of zooming out. <laughs> okay, there's some ease down here. And you, you can take your time placing these. There's no rush on this. Anytime you're doing craft, anything, you want to give yourself some time to do it and, and have fun doing it and not feel stressed doing it. Okay. I'm a little uneven. <laughs> That's the practice thing. And I find sometimes doing it while trying to record it and I'm trying to watch how it's being shown on the TV, on the screen, which this isn't always the greatest angle either. Let me, let me pause it for a second, see if I can get a different angle. Okay, this is a different angle. It's probably a little wiggle in it because I have you balanced on my arm in the chair. But we'll see if I can show you this. You're probably going to get a, in the course of these videos, you're going to get a good view of this entirety of this room. <laughs> Where's my ease? Ah. But because I'm trying to hold it down for you to see it a little easier, I missed. <laughs> Sometimes these shiny canvases are a little hard to see. So 
I kind of have to check to see if it hit where I wanted it to hit. Okay, and I'm going to try to zoom that without dropping you a little bit more. And we'll see how that goes. Just trying to get you guys some different angles on how you can hold the pen, the drill pen, in a different way. Oof, that reflection is killing me. <laughs> There's one more right, right up here. Okay, so I'm going to pause that right here, and I'll work on this some more, and we'll be back to check on it. And we're back. I did end up completing all the little small drills, um, and I did do these big ones too. The only ones I have left at this point are the special shaped ones. So we got the, the hearts, the orange teardrops, and these little tiny silver teardrops is basically what we have left on this canvas. So I actually can take this whole thing off because it's not, um, not really holding to the glue. So I want to make sure I get these done before that glue has a chance to dry out. Now, because these are odd shaped, I have found that using this to try to pick them up and place them um, was a little bit challenging when I tried it with the bookmark that I did. And you can find that video in my old videos there. Um, so I wanted to look at using tweezers, which is what I ended up using for the bookmark. But I also, if I tip this back a little bit, have a collection of pliers and stuff that maybe we can look at to see alternative options. Um, the little bit a bit before this one was about how you can hold the pen in an alternative way. And I wanted to kind of branch off of that and go over how we can use different tools rather than just tweezers because tweezers can be great but they can also be small and hard to hold and hard to control especially if you have trouble holding things so the different pliers i have and some of these i've had for a long time and um, are a little rusty but that just means they've been well used so there's different kinds that we can use we have this very narrow needle nose plier right here and the nice thing about this is there's it's really a soft open close. There's no resistance either way, which can be good or bad depending upon how you're working on things and how what your hand needs help with. So sometimes with these, because they don't bounce back open easily, I'll put a finger in like that so that I have a little bit more control option. I have these guys too. I don't actually tend to use these much, even with my jewelry making. The purpose of them is that they're supposed to be a softer grip on fragile things like bendable metal that you don't want to put an indent in. But I find that this is actually not a very soft um, edge on here. This is actually pretty hard, so it can still put dents in things. So I don't tend to use this one, but this one might be a good, especially if you're doing something like that, you can maybe come in and grab a bead and put it down. It might have a different different hold option and these are the two one of the two that I use very often when especially when I'm working with jump rings and such I like that this has an angle so that you can maybe get in there a little easier in place and it's not too big and it does has a spring so it will pop itself back open and this is the same thing but in a straight format so what I wanted to do was to pick one of these probably this orange teardrop one because there's a lot more of them than say the heart ones and just see how how it goes with the different items so the teardrops are number two which are these blue teardrops 
kind of interesting. They have blue teardrops on here, but they're really going to be orange. <laughs> so let's get these guys out. And we're just going to go through all of them and just see how it works out. And again, it's going to be different for different people. Ooh, that one's stuck pretty good in that spot. We'll just leave that for now then. So different people are going to have different experiences with this. And you can do what feels best on you. Oh, some of these fell. I did have some of these fall the other day. And I thought I got them all. Apparently not. <laughs> okay, so we're just going to start with these guys and see how this goes. And let me see if I can get a little closer. But still let it be so you guys can see. So I also try to pick them up when they're the right orientation so that I'm not trying to um, turn them around once I've picked them up. I kind of try to go with how they're already facing so that I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to pick one of these up and go here and then have to do this whole weird turnaround thing. And then I'm just using my fingers and stuff to help push them down before they get too um, stuck on there and make sure they're in the right spot. So that's the tweezers. Let's try these guys. I have a feeling that these guys might be a little too thin for these. These might be a little bit better. Oh, but that's not bad. For the little tiny ones that I have on these guys. Okay, so that was those. I hope that, well, actually you probably couldn't see that very well because these put these further away. Let me go to one of these guys all the way over here so you can see that a little bit better. So because these don't have the auto open, they don't have the spring in them, they are a little bit more clumsy for me, but they might work better for somebody else. Um, we're going to try these guys next. And I think these, I think... Let's see. I'm going to zoom you out just a tiny bit. I think for these, I kind of want to come in this way. But I'm not picking them up very well that way. So these might work better for ones that are really odd shaped that aren't smooth, that have a little bit of a grip to them. Um, because I am very much not getting these picked up. This is just sliding right off. <laughs> so we'll go on to the next one, which is this guy right here. It's the curved ones. And I like the curves because a lot of times I can be a lot more precise. And it's nice on, it's nice on my wrist. I don't have to do any twisting or anything. So let me see if I can zoom in a little bit on some of these guys down here. And then before I push them down, I just make sure they're lined up well. Now, I do notice this one doesn't always like to pick these up. And that's just kind of the nature of the beast, I think. They're very round, shiny. You just have to get them to sit right. Sometimes it's challenging, but that's okay. We take our time and kind of work on it. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish putting these guys on, these little orange teardrops. Then I'm going to I'm going to pause it, finish putting these on, and then I'm going to come back with these little tiny ones and we'll kind of go through that same process and and see how that works. So, be right back. Okay, we're back. Um, I got all of these little red ones on. I have to say this one made me a little nervous cuz I basically have two left over. So there wasn't much room for mistake or a potential dropping on those. That's, that's not always a good thing. So we're going to try these little teardrops. And they are tiny. I feel like they're almost smaller than a regular bead. So 
they might work well being picked up by the actual let me pop that up a little bit a little better angle here these might work fine being picked up by the actual typical uh, diamond painting pen but I just want to try them with the tweezers just so you can kind of see how that goes this one down here requires a whole bunch of them and it's not too bad Let's see if I can get a little closer and still get you to see that ah! seasick Oop, oop. Technical difficulty. <laughs> there, I think I got it. <laughs> um, these are teeny, teeny, tiny. And they're really close together. So these might... These might be too tiny... Well, we know they're going to be too tiny for these guys. These are too big. Um, they were having trouble with the big ones. They might not be too tiny for uh, needle nose. So we'll give that a shot and see. Okay. Well, needle nose sort of picks it up. <laughs> we dropped it. Okay, that one works. I dropped it. Come here. Okay, let's go ahead and try with the pen and see how that works. See if it'll pick it up. Because what I had the issue with last time is that the pen wasn't really picking the odd shapes up and it tended to drop them. So it just dropped it there, but at least got me close enough that I could place it. Hope you guys can see this okay. And I am having to move it with my finger and the pen because this is a very small fitting spot. That one went down nicely. We'll just finish this little tiny one up here. And the thing with the pen when you're doing this any of these especially these odd shaped ones and probably when i get into the square ones too so you got to pay attention to where it's oriented where where is it shaped so that when you go to put it down or is it pointing rather you can make sure it's on the right spot so there's that one um so what we're going to do is we're going to pause again and i'm going to finish all these little um, odd shaped one because there's not a ton of them but there's enough of them that'll take me a few minutes so we'll be back when that is done okay and we're back i just finished all of these little guys these little extra shaped ones um and a couple of things i really don't like these little small um teardrop ones they're really hard to pick up they're really hard to see because they're silver on both sides and both sides are equally shiny so it was really hard to tell if i had them all or i had them in the right spot and then because they were so small they were really scattered throughout i had a hard time finding them all like i was just looking through and after i'd done this and done the hearts i found this little random one you yeah. You see that little guy up there? All by its lonesome. <laughs> so I had to go back and fill him in. Um, and then these hearts ended up being so awkward and hard to pick up. I ended up just using my finger. That ended up being fingers. That ended up being the easiest for me. Um, but again, it depends upon what you need. So if that doesn't work for you, you can always do something else. I like this one. This one was a fun one to do. It was. A quick one only took me a few days of a 
couple hours each day working on it to get it done and to kind of figure out my technique a little bit. Um, I have to say these guys in the center were a little difficult because the glue, it's not over all of, all of this part, which it shouldn't be, but it seems like where they did put the glue line, it wasn't maybe 100% um, where it needed to be, like maybe it was off by a little bit. So some of these I had to kind of hold down to try to get them to stick. So what I'm also thinking I might do with this one is I think I might try sealing this. This is a good kind of practice one. It's not one that I particularly care about. I'm not super attached to this one. It didn't take me hours and hours and I'm just going to be heartbroken if it comes out wrong. So I think I'm going to try to seal this. I know you can seal partial canvases and you just do like more of a paintbrush and just seal where the the actual drills are and not the entire thing. So I do have some gloss Mod Podge to try with that. I couldn't find super gloss um, at any of my craft stores that are near me. So if I want to get the super gloss one at some point, that'll probably be an online Amazon or such order to get that. But anyway, I thought this would be a good one to start with. So I'm probably going to start that will be another video where I kind of go over my first sealing experience. The other thing that I found very annoying with this one, so you see how there's kind of a shine, Let's see if I can get it, yeah, see how that kind of has a reflection there, even not where the beads are, that's, it's not even just the glue, because this canvas will actually do it too, uh, it's just kind of hard to show, to show it, so when I get a bright light on it so I can see where I need to be a little bit better, a little easier, it tended to make a glare. And it made it almost impossible to see when the glare was there. So I had to like kind of contort myself a little bit to get the glare out of the way enough that I could see what I was doing. But this is a nice cute one. I had fun doing this one. So we shall or I shall do a video next on sealing this one and see how it comes out. But until then... A little close up that lost the light. Focus. No, it will not focus. <laughs> it says no, that's not how I work. <laughs> um but this one's done and until I get that other video do that other video, I hope you guys stay happy and stay safe. Bye.